What does it take to become a doctor? These are the real life stories of McMaster University's med students. On this episode of Med Students, deadly meningitis puts Allison in jeopardy. Sick kids keep Rupinder up all night. And Amanda faces her first trauma. When I found out she was pregnant, that just kind of put me for a loop because I'm like, oh my goodness, now there's not one, but there's two lives at stake. It's not yet dawn, but med students are already on the move. My name is Amanda Maroney. I'm from Winona, a small town of Winona, east of Stony Creek. I still live at home with my parents and I commute to school. I am in third year medicine. Go to McMaster and uh, I love it there. <laughs> I love to have fun, I love to smile, and I love to talk, so I hope you're ready for it. <laughs> you're always worried, you know, do I know enough? Do I know enough to keep, you know, trying to get things, even in your spare time, you find yourself kind of reading around no topic in particular, just about medicine. These are the rules for surviving any kind of clinical rotation. Never stand when you can sit. Never sit if you can lie down. Eat when you can, sleep when you can, but never let them see you eat or sleep. It remains to be seen if Rupender can follow his own rules working an overnight on-call shift. You like working in the emergency? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, I'm very much at home. My parents aren't too thrilled with that. They think it's too stressful for me. But uh, I'm actually less stressed out there than I am uh, most other times. Hi. My mother's a nurse, and she hit me with all sorts of medical information as a kid. Um, I knew the different types of blood cells by the time I was five, which is not normal. It's, that's sick. <laughs> There's an intrinsic problem if you do know that. I'm doing trauma at the general right now, and. I'm doing it because it scares me. <laughs> um, and it's not so much the trauma itself that scares me, but it's, it's the uncertainty and the, um, the mystery behind it. I didn't really know what to do if a patient came in. You know, I, pl I plan to be a family doctor in a small rural, rural, rural community. And uh, in a small town like that, if somebody comes in, I've always been worried that I wouldn't know exactly how to handle it. A throbbing kind of pain is often the first sign of a tight cast. Amanda's morning cast starts with a teaching the session. Medication orders. If you look at the top of the picture, what do you see? C-spine collar. C-spine collar, good. Ooh. Are you on elective? Hey. Yeah. In ortho? No, I'm doing trauma. Yikes. Yeah, exactly. Yikes. Just hours after leaving the safety of the classroom, Amanda's called to the trauma suite. We are now um, at the trauma suite in uh, the emergency department at Hamilton General, and we're awaiting uh, a trauma to come in. Uh, it's a 27-year-old woman who's uh, currently still trapped in her vehicle after a car accident. So I believe she's getting air transported here. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I'm OK. <laughs> Got a good team with me, so that's <laughs> good. <laughs> As a first-year resident, Rapinder is assigned a different rotation every few weeks. Tonight, he's on call for pediatrics. So I've got my page here. Basically, I have no idea what's going to happen tonight. To be honest, it's been almost two years since I've done non-adult medicine. And so it's been a, a big learning curve. Is that me? It is. OK, you got to excuse me. I have to answer that. Rapinder is called to ER. Hello. Hannah is refusing to drink and may be seriously dehydrated. This is Hannah, eh? Ah. 
I'll introduce myself now that he's rolling. I'm Dr. Sassi. I'm one of the residents who's working in the pediatric service. She, she won't even drink at this. Mm -hmm. You gotta cooperate, all right? You gotta chill out. You gotta make me look good in front of the cameras, okay? Mm -hmm. I have a hard time seeing kids who are in a lot of pain, a lot of distress. Um, seeing parents who are trying to cope with a child who's really quite ill and uh, it's hard to maintain your professional detachment so I find that's the stuff that that wears down at me and you know if it didn't I'd be that much less human I think to train for trauma Amanda has been through simulations but no drill could fully prepare her for the pressure she's under now Amanda, can you check the light? She's got a laceration. Our trauma team leader is Dr. Alan He'll be uh, doing the majority of the um, assessment. I'll be in there. I've got a pair of scissors, and I'm going to be uh, removing the clothing. And whatever else I can do, I will assist with. Everything changes every time, so it all depends also on the patient's status, and hopefully everything will be okay. Just don't panic. Don't panic. Don't panic. Hi. All residents are supervised by a staff doctor. Rapinder asks Dr. Ivor Margolis to check on Hannah. When was her last? She had a poop since she's been in here? Yeah. Okay. Did they keep it or did they throw it away, you know? They threw it away. Okay. Because I want to send sample order. I wanted to send I want to send it off for a culture to see if there's any, you know, viruses or bacteria growing. So if she has any other poops from now on, send them off for culture to the lab, okay? okay. What do you think? You've seen it before, right? All right? In the meantime, we'll try to look for anything in the lab test that'll give us an idea if there's an underlying cause for this. Oh, hello. Oh, yeah. well, we may just have a sample now. There's a second. On cue. Oh, no, there's stuff in there. I have the phone on my pants. Let me move quickly. All right, here we go. There we go. Emergency. No, okay. Well, they call the emergency room for a reason. Okay. I'm glad we got that uh, sample. Do we know what time That's the accident is? When is it going to two hours. About two hours ago. Two hours? Yeah. yeah. So far, Amanda's coping with the trauma, but things are about to get worse. No head injury. No, is she, is she saying she's four months pregnant? Four and a half. It's about four and a half months. We'll take band in your arm. Okay. 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 another IV in your arm. Tomorrow is 19 Tomorrow is 19 weeks. Okay. When I found out she was pregnant, that just kind of put me for a loop. Because I'm like, oh my goodness, now there's not one, but there's there's two lives at stake. So um, puts a different twist on things. Everyone was quite aware of that. My name is Allison Broder, and I'm 26 years old. Right now, I'm in my last year of medical school. I'll be graduating in May as a doctor, and I'm in my internal medicine rotation. Allison is responsible for an elderly patient on the clinical training unit. Hello. Hi, how are you? Buongiorno. How are you doing? Not too bad, not, not too bad. bad. Not up partying late tonight? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> I don't come from a medical background. All my jobs have been very people oriented. I've been a social director for a resort in Muskoka. I've been a bartender. I've been a waitress. I've been, I've worked at a law firm. I've worked at an accounting firm. Did you do the stairs today? No. No? No. <laughs> no. Did he's he do coming, the stairs? He's coming this morning before you come. There's a sweet couple, and his wife really cares about him, but she doesn't re really believe he has dementia. Oh, are you lying to you me? You say I don't want Did you not use the stairs? No. 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 I don't want to the stairs. Oh, so what are you going to do tomorrow? Yeah. He's going to do it tomorrow. You're going to do it tomorrow. How far does the therapist make him walk? Uh, probably... She just tells us, no, 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 that's just a part of normal aging. And we said, you know, normal aging, you keep your mind, you know, that's not part of normal aging, but... She doesn't want to face it. Hannah has suddenly improved. 
she started drinking again. She's fixed. Hey. Well, I mean, she's still going to come in to get investigated because it's been going on for so long, but that's great. The major problem was that she wasn't drinking enough fluids, and, you know, we walked out there and she drank the whole bottle of, uh, of uh, dextrose. The MD sort of comes to light when you start signing things that you haven't signed before. Um, signing my first death certificate, um, signing my first uh, Form 1, where I certified someone to be held against their will in the hospital, things like that. You sort of write your name down, you look at it and think, I just did that. She's a young, healthy woman, and uh, she was in a car accident by a transport truck, so um, apparently it didn't hit her directly on, but it, it, it got her in. I mean, it took an hour and a half to extricate her or take her out of the car. But she's sustained some pretty severe injuries, so I'm still praying for that baby. <laughs> yeah. Amanda has trouble monitoring the patient's vital signs and turns to the trauma team leader for help. Yeah, we're going to do it right now. Do you know how to take a deep breath, really? Do you know how to take? It's normal. Okay, take deep breath now. Yeah. It's after midnight, and Allison is paged to the ER to see a very sick patient. I'm not sure what's going on with him yet. Supposedly he's delirious and possibly some kind of infection going on. He has a stiff neck, and they're questioning him whether or not he has meningitis. I've I've seen possible meningitis cases before, but I've never actually handled it or approached it myself. So this, again, will be another first time to do something. It's time for Rupinder to put his rules into practice. Rule number one, eat when you can. One of the joys of working on call is the fact that cafeteria closes at 6 o'clock, so it's time to get vending machine friendly. And my parents wonder why I've gained weight. Decisions, decisions. I'm not going for the lean cuisine machine here. A lot of doctors try to eat healthy. Um, it gets easier as you go on in your career, but at this point, I'm just looking for something to tide me over, so. That's another thing you get good at, drinking while you walk. Rule number two, sleep when you can. Oh. Down this corridor is the call rooms, and when we're on call, and if we're lucky enough to uh, be able to get some sleep or get some time off, uh, each of us has a room assigned to us. We pick up keys uh, in the morning. But once again, Rependers called back to ER. I probably, I was probably in bed for about half an hour, 40 minutes. As to whether or not I actually fell asleep, probably not. It's kind of hard to fall asleep when you've got that pager sitting right next to your head and it could explode at any second and that's sort of what was running through my head a little bit. Amanda and the trauma team continue to work on the pregnant car accident victim. Amanda, what's her pulse and blood pressure now, please? Her blood pressure is 108 on 61, pulse 96. Oxygen saturation now? 98. All right, that's good. It's calm on the outside, a little uh, shaky on the inside. This is the first trauma I've actually seen. I've done simulations on dummies, but it was just a whole different experience to see it live and, and there's a person there. Do you know if you lost consciousness at all today when you, after the accident? Do you remember everything since the accident? No. No. Oh. We're gonna give you something to oh. okay? Are you? Oh. Okay. They're, just, they're just putting in a line there to help give you fluids, okay? Okay, you're doing so well. You're doing so great. Joe, how how is meningitis spread? <laughs> Aerosolized? Yeah, as I thought. Okay. It's, it's like the TB. It's through the air. As for me, that's, I guess, you know, part of being a doctor. You, you have to treat your patient. Working in the healthcare field, there's always a possibility you're going to catch something. Allison takes precautions, 
but nothing can fully protect her from contracting deadly meningitis. Allison suits up to meet her patient. How you doing? All right. When I try to get his pupillary reflexes, I couldn't even get the reflex because I'd open his eye and his eye would roll back in his head and that's not very good. <laughs> so. It's not something I feel safe handling by myself. And that's part of being a medical student. You're here to learn, but you also know that if you see something that you don't think you can handle, it's above your level, you get someone right away. Hello? Hey, I'm, I'm pretty concerned about this patient. Uh, the one who possible meningitis. Can somebody call x-ray? We want ultrasound of the abdomen, please. We're just gonna move you to do an x-ray, okay? Mm -hmm. Can we have lots of muscles? This is the first time I've actually um, had to coordinate the actual lifting of the patient. Um, I've done it in simulated uh, cases, but never on an actual patient. Yeah, you're doing great. You're doing great, okay? Ready? Okay, on count of three. One, two, three, up. Oh. Okay, we're almost there. Oh. Good, and down. One, two, three, and down. Amanda learns to set a broken bone from Dr. Sam Casper. Give her a deuce of fracture. So you put your thumb right there. Right here? Yeah, right there. Put it down flat. You feel the bone grinding? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you give it a little push with your thumb. Usually you put traction. This one's not displaced, though. You go wiggle it around until you feel the actual crunchy part. Mm -hmm. You worsen the deformity, then push it with your thumb and go down. So I took a temperature, and it turned out to be 104. Sorry, you noticed that one? Repinder's uh, next patient has a high fever. And when I, I took his temperature, and it was 104.5. Hi. Hi. I don't think he knows exactly what to make of me yet. No. So Dr. Bell had prescribed some antibiotics at that time, is that Yeah, right? um, amoxicillin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm for his ear infection. And what Plus, about for the fever? Uh, the Tylenol every four hours. And how much Tylenol? I give him mm. uh, 1.75 milliliters every four hours. Tyler is a bit of a mystery. I know that there's a high white cell count, which is indicative of a fever. We've got to find a cause for it. Mm. So that's all serious, but on the other side, the kid just looks so good. A little bit cross and a little bit irritable, but doesn't look like an unwell child. So, our oh, main thing is the APC. Allison yeah. consults with the senior medical resident. Yeah. I think they did that CAT scan. That was, okay. normal. It was normal. So that's a short. Okay. Okay. So that's a short. Okay. So we should continue just examine him neurologically. Okay. Just see if we define any lesion. Okay. 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 okay great. Right. Thank you. William. The threat of contagion has been downgraded, so Allison drops the gloves and mask. Are you right. The patient must still be tested to determine the cause of his illness. So we're going to have to do a lumbar puncture and uh, probably attempt my first lumbar puncture. Doing all right? The risk of a lumbar puncture is that there's a small risk with the lumbar puncture, but you can have a hemorrhage at the spot where the needle goes in. It's a painful procedure. And it's not something you want to do unless you have to. Autoclave. Repinder tries to solve the mystery of Tyler's high fever. Oh, yeah, say wow. Okay, thanks. I'm starting to think that this persistent fever is probably due to the underdosing of the Tylenol to control it. 
And having seen that, there's this incredible eureka effect, which you probably saw a few minutes ago. I'm being very sedate now because I've had time to sit down and think about it. But I walked out of the patient's room with Tom on my hand going, this is the answer. Medication goes up to seven, and the Tylenol goes up to five Perfect. milliliters. Yeah. <laughs> Calm. Go sleep. Get better. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you. And after 26 hours, Repinder is also ready to go home. How am I doing right now? Not bad. The coffee you guys bought me really helped. <laughs> Appreciated that very much. Take this away from me. <laughs> It's your problem now. Okay. But you have he hands off his patients to the resident replacing him on call. I'm getting out of here because I'm, I'm still tired. <laughs> no matter how quiet the night is, you never get a full night's sleep. So, OK, have fun. I guess I'll see you tomorrow at 9. <laughs> but I'm going home, and nobody bled on my shoes. Um, believe it or not, that's, that's, that's a high point. Allison's patient has been admitted to hospital. His lumbar puncture has been postponed. Well, right now, I am going to bed. And the time is 6.15, and I have to be up for about 7.30, so I'll get about an hour of sleep, which is yeah, enough to make me feel a little bit more alive, so that's good. Amanda and the trauma team have stabilized the patient and her baby. So we're going to be taking her now to a CT to have a, a CT scan done. Despite her initial anxiety, Amanda's first trauma has gone well. As her shift ends, she reveals the source of her inner strength. I can be there and help the patient physically, but in my head, I'm always saying something in my head to God just to say, okay, let's have get through this one to help this person. And I think it works, so <laughs> I'm not going to mess with it. <laughs> it's a higher power we're dealing with. <laughs> oh, where did I park? Oh, yeah, I'm up there. <laughs> On the next episode of Med Students, Karen deals with heart failure. Allison's supervisor gives her a surprise. And Dave's 98-year-old patient stays awake through major surgery. How are you doing? <laughs>